What's up, y'all? So today I'm gonna give you guys a checklist of 10 items that you should be checking for when you're buying a used camera. Uh, most of the time I buy my used gears from Facebook Market, but you can definitely try to like check at Swappa, uh, MPB, or whatever the case is. But this is really pertaining to if you're going to meet somebody, um, like and it actually doing like a physical handoff, especially again like Facebook Market or Craigslist. Um, some of the things you could check for immediately to see if this camera is, you know, the camera for you. Now the first thing I would do, and this is probably this is not even part of the top 10 checklist, but just out the gate, the first thing that you want to do is to make sure that the camera that you're paying for is around the price that they're selling it for right so for example if the a6600 goes for like eleven hundred dollars brand new right uh but if somebody's sitting here trying to sell it to me use it at price fam stop it so definitely start to go uh if you're considering the camera make sure you research the camera to kind of see where the used prices are at right so if he's selling it for like 1100 and you check like on mpb or keh and they're like yo we got it for 850 exactly but uh enough of that let's actually get into the real top 10 things you need to look for which will be number one the shutter count now the shutter count is actually very easy to do now in most situations you will find somebody like on facebook who's actually like a photographer who's selling the camera they'll like easily do it and they just like post it like in their actual little feed or whatever but this is something that you can actually do yourself it's very simple all you're gonna do is actually go ahead and uh if you have a laptop with you so you need a laptop with you you're gonna uh, go to tools.scientist.si um and he's gonna hit take a picture on the camera pop the sd card into your laptop and you're gonna drag it to that and it's gonna uh tell you what's the actual shutter count now if you see a shutter count like around 10,000 15,000 that's actually not bad for a used camera right depending on especially what year it came out the times you want to kind of start getting worries like around maybe like that 40,000 50,000 shutter count mark and also research the camera because each camera has like a a, a specified shutter count which like yo they're they're guaranteed right so some cameras you'll see like they have a you know a shutter count guarantee of like 50,000 or I think I think the highest goes like now is like something crazy like 500,000 like they have some type of shutter accusations like that um but just research the camera because each camera has a different shutter count in which it's specified for to kind of let you know the life of the camera that you're going to be buying into. Moving on to number two is very simple. Make sure all the buttons and dials work. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're going to check out the camera, make sure that you're actually physically checking the buttons. Make sure it's not sticky. Make sure they ain't had their kids playing with the camera. And you're like, come on, fam. Why is it Kool-Aid dripping out the buttons, bro? So make sure that you definitely uh, check out all the actual buttons and make sure they're not sticky and they are actual functional. Moving on to number three. We actually breeze through these pretty quick. It shouldn't take this long. Uh, just like I told you all with the shutter count, make sure you bring your own SD card, right? You don't want to use the SD card that we use because, man, like I'm telling y'all, like sometimes people found a way to make their stuff work specifically for them. So they might have that one SD card that only works in that camera and you pop yours in, man, and a battery blow out. Like you just, um, B, I don't know, B, just make sure you bring your own SD cards and just make sure that it actually writes uh, to the SD card that you're using because, again, if it's an SD card you've been putting in your camera, then at least make sure that like it can write to your actual card. Also, to kind of avoid that, to make sure you actually have the right SD card because some uh, cameras write faster depending on like the write speed. So for me, I would just say a rule of thumb, get you a V60 SD card so that way you can make sure that you're actually getting like that. If it's like 11 frames per second, whatever the burst frames per second is, you're actually able to hit that without actually hitting like a slow point. Move on to number four is to, be, to check all record modes. So if, you should, if you're filming in 10K, 10K, if you're filming in 4K or 1080p, you actually want to record those filming modes to make sure they all work. You're not getting any type of weird playback. So you definitely make sure you play it back to make sure the footage is actually looks like what you're recording because you can sit there and record it and let's just say it got pixel binning or it's a dead pixel or anything like that on the actual sensor and you're recording something you don't know, that could be a huge issue. Moving on to number five, this is actually pretty simple. Now I say, you know, use a bright sky, but you actually use like a, a, a white table, a white piece of paper. All you wanna do is sit there and take a picture like at a pretty hot ice or something like that to make sure look, it looks pretty bright. And what it's gonna do is gonna uncover any smudges or dirt marks on the sensor, right? And it's also kinda let you know like the condition of which the person was actually keeping that camera in. So if it's like you you take the picture, you see marks and smudges all over the sensor. Hey bro, what what was, what was you doing with it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Was you licking your finger, putting a stamp on it? Like, that's not the camera you want okay somebody's selling your camera they should at least make sure that the sensor is clean at the very least moving on to number six is again kind of touched like with the sd cards and make sure you got the right uh card to shoot the, the actual frames per second that the camera can so what you want to do is make sure the burst uh burst the burst modes work now the reason this is important because for example as you guys can see uh there's an actual like little uh curtain or shutter um, you want to make sure that's actually coming down each time you take a picture, right? So what you want to do is to make sure the camera's on a silent mode. You can ask the person to take it out of silent mode. You want to make sure the camera's not in silent mode because if it's not, if it's in silent mode, they're only going to use the actual sensor, right? 
is not going to actually have the shutter come down. If he actually has, if the person who's selling the camera actually has a problem with the shutter, if it's silent mode, you wouldn't know. You, or if you're purchasing a DSL, a DSLR, make sure the mirror is actually flipping up and down. This is very important because not all not all situations going to work with you using an electronic shutter. Now moving on to number seven. Um, this is something that. I feel like, again, if you're buying a camera, you've at least researched this at some point, make sure the f-stop and ISO work exactly how it's intended to work, right? So with the ISO, if the numbers are going up, the screen should be getting brighter. Uh, same thing with the shutter speed, make sure, again, make sure all the dials work. If you're going up, uh, if the number's getting bigger in the shutter speed, that means you're letting less light in to, to take a faster picture, right? Same thing with the f-stop, if you are, um, making the f-stop go higher, maybe the lens like a f2.8, um, and you're making it like a, uh, you would make it like a f5.6, it should be getting darker. So if it's doing any other things than actually respond to the, the actual ISO or the f-stop or the shutter speed, if it's doing any, if it's not moving, if it's not changing, if your picture is not getting brighter or darker, then you actually have a problem with internally within the camera. So you, again, let it go. <laughs> Moving on to number eight. Before we get on to number eight, because we only got eight, nine, ten. We only got like three more to go. Why did I count? I don't know. But uh, this video is actually sponsored by your boy, Brooks Media. So if you're somebody who's looking to start YouTube, who kind of needs us like uh, a good head start on where to start, whether it's reading the Google Analytics, um, how to reach out to sponsors, what are some of the key things that you should focus on, or what, what software you should be using. I cover all this in an hour consultation. The first thing people to sign up using the code YT2021 um, gets 20% off. So. If there's something, if you're trying to start a YouTube career and you need something by somebody who actually has proof of what they've done, my first channel had over 1.7 million views and this channel's going pretty quick as well. Um, if that's something you're interested in, man, like, make sure you check the link down in the description below. All my meetings are recorded, so the only thing you have to do is come prepared with an open mind, be receptive, um, because you will have recorded, you will have recorded video segment, an audio segment, and notes that I take during the call so to make sure that you're fully aware and paying attention of the information I'm giving you. If that sounds like something that interests you, make sure you click the link down in the description below. Hey y'all, it's pretty cool, right? I, I get to sponsor on my videos. I felt like that was pretty cool. I, anyway, moving on to number eight, which is gonna be to check the EVF, right? This guy that you put your eye through, EVF, electronic viewfinder, or the actual LCD. Now, me personally, I, I, I don't shoot pictures with the EVF B. Like, plus I'm using a Sony A7S III and it has the greatest EVF in the world, I don't use it. So at the very least, you wanna make sure that uh, both of these work, the LCD work, and it's not giving you any kind of like false readings or you don't have any screen cracks or anything like that. This is the thing that you're gonna be sitting here taking your pictures on, so you wanna make sure that there's no damage with it uh, whatsoever. Uh, same thing like you got like a cell phone, right? You wanna make sure there's like those long lines, no dead pixels, any of that. You do, you have a defective camera. That's not the camera you wanna buy. Moving on to number nine. Now, this is actually important because some people actually think like, don't get me wrong, I know people use third party batteries, but I don't. The money I'm spending on my cameras, be I'm not putting any other battery than what's recommended to go in it. And what happens is sometimes you can't even you can't even actually update your camera with the wrong battery. So for example, with Sony cameras, uh, it's gonna be like a, it, the battery's gonna look like this, it should have a green icon on it. If the battery does not have a green icon on it, that means a third party, a third party battery and that's, you know, you wanna ask them for the original battery. They do not have the original battery. Um, I mean, me personally, you know, I wouldn't buy the camera if it didn't have the original battery because it's like, yo B, where's the original battery? I mean, I feel like I shouldn't have to ask you for that because third party batteries, believe it or not, depending on where they got it from, can actually mess up their internals of the camera. See, I'm putting y'all up on game. And number 10, this is kind of like a thing I would just do anyway, just to make sure that like, the, the actual power is actually coming to the camera. I just power cycle the camera on at least like three times. Um, that's just something I do to make sure like, yo, it's you guys don't have some type of voodoo witchery where it's like, yo, if you turn the camera on the fourth time or the second time, it won't turn. Nah, I'm gonna make sure I power cycle this joint a couple of times and make sure that it actually works, turn it off and on, make sure I'm not getting any false messages or error reads or anything like that. Actually to fully inspect your camera. So with that being said, man, I give you guys uh, 10 things to check out when you're sitting here purchasing a new camera. In the next video, I'm gonna tell you guys um, things that you should consider before you actually buy that camera, which actually has nothing to do with the camera, actually has everything to do with you. So, that being said, if you enjoyed the video, man, please share, give it a thumbs up. Your boy's actually trying to grow a business here. Um, and we moving and rocking, baby. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all love and support. Other than that, it's your boy Sean B, and I'm out. Deuces.